Okay, so uh, now what we have is we have y equals negative two to the x. And one thing, there's a couple things that I want you to um, kind of understand when looking at graphing. And I think I feel a sneeze coming on, but I'm not sure yet. I'll get back to you. So when looking at this, um, we can apply this by either applying our transformations, or we can also apply this by taking a look at um, by creating a table. And what I like to do is when I'm looking when I'm looking at this is first to kind of understand there's very two important points when we're looking at um, a a growth function. First of all, we have our y-intercept, which we know um, unless there's any transformations is always going to be at the point zero one. But then we also have another point, because when we put 1, we know that we're going to have b. So a lot of times what we can do is if we can just find these two points and then apply our transformations after that, um, then we'll be able to graph this. So if I look at this, I need to evaluate a small little table for my x and y coordinates for 1 and 0. So when I plug in 1, what I have is y equals negative 2 raised to the first power. And that's just going to equal a negative 2. When I have y equals negative 2 raised to the 0, that equals 2 raised to the 0, which is 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. You have to make sure we apply the order of operations when doing this, that we raise our base to our power before we multiply by negative 1. So therefore, when looking at this graph, we're not shifting it left or right at all. But you can see now, when x equals 1, we're going down to negative 2. And when x equals 0, we're going down to negative 1. And you can see that when we have a reflection, all right, what the graph is going to be doing is it's going to be reflecting over our y, or over our, uh, our x-axis. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, our graph is going to be an exact reflection of what we have over here, just based on that negative 2. And obviously, we have you know, different bases um, that go through. But you can see that by following through these points, all we can simply do is take our parent graph and reflect it, reflect it over based on the, um, our points. So we can just delete this. And now, last thing that we'd like to do, I go ahead and, and determine the domain and the range in the asymptote. Well, again, you could see that my asymptote, all I did with my reflection, it's still going to be approaching the same line. So my asymptote, the, the line that my graph is going to be approaching, is still going to be y equals 0. My domain. You can see that this graph is going to continue. It's going to be real for all values to the left and all values to the right. So that my domain is going to be going from negative infinity to infinity. And my range is now, you can see before a range you know, is always a value is above 0. Well, now it's going to be going down to all values to negative infinity, but it's only going to go up to 0 um, or approach to 0. It's never going to go above. So therefore, my range will be from negative infinity to 0. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an exponential growth function with a reflection. Thanks.